Okay, hopefully this will be better. We're live right now. This looks like a little bit better. Hopefully you can hear me and see me okay. Let me just get this all set up on my end. Sorry about the little bit of uh, confusion there, but you sh we should be live now. So let me... Okay, let's see. We got two people already here. Okay. A little bit of technical difficulties today. Is it better? Okay, so I put it to 1080p. So that's better. Seems like a little bit of a delay. All right, so let's, uh, it's delayed. Uh, I don't know what to tell you guys. Tech Realm, good to see you. Yeah, it's delayed, I don't know. Some people say it's better, some people still delayed. It's a half a second delay. Is that better? Let's see if this is better. Testing one, two, three. I just turned, I think I fixed the problem. Testing one, two, three. I think it's better now. All right, let's just get to work business here. We had a good start and then it just crapped out on us. Let's just carry on. So we have, oh, okay, it's good now, better, okay. All right, I think I fixed the problem. All right, good to see Raphael, good to see you here. Everybody, let's just restart this thing. How are you doing? Okay, we got it much better now. We've got, let's see how many people here, 34 already watching. So let's get it going. Second try, hopefully this will be a good one. Perfect. All right, so couple of housekeeping measures. If you want to help out the channel, just hit the like button. That does me a favor because it gets spread out over YouTube. Um, and then we can also get it seen by more people. Now, super chat, super stickers, super, um, what was it? Super chat, super stickers, memberships are open. And of course, super thanks are, are good on the replays as well because I had a shell out over $2,000 for this. So, you know, I take one for the team, as they say. Um, Really, really expensive stuff, but I'm really interested in seeing this. I got a chance to see this back again at CES in January, so I got a little bit of hands-on time, but now I have my own here. This is one I bought. Now, Dell did reach out to me, and they said they would be sending me a review unit once they get some in hand, but um, so far, I don't know how many people, I'm sorry, I don't know when that's coming, and I did the platinum version here, so I don't know if, hopefully they'll send me the graphite version. So we have 46 of you watching. I'm sorry about a little bit of the technical difficulties, but that's life. A couple of other things, uh, the channel is growing. We are at 126,000 subscribers right now. Uh, we're gonna hit 127 soon, so that's good. We just passed 28 million uh, views on the channel. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in each and every week. And it really helps obviously grow the channel, but we still have a lot more to do. I have a lot more things I'd like to accomplish. And uh, so hopefully that'll be uh, growing at a faster rate as far as this channel is concerned. And I will be in Germany, believe it or not, in, um, uh, in about a week or so, uh, by the 28th to the 30th, uh, maybe even a little bit longer. I'm attending a press briefing. Uh, can't talk about it yet, but I will be in Berlin. So if anybody wants to get together, then uh, that would be great. I want to welcome a member to the channel, Fox365, who just became a member. So thank you, Fox. Uh, that's, that really helps out the channel on a monthly basis. You are my, uh, amazing, my friend, and that is great. Thank you, Armstrong Tech. We got Raphael here. Thank you, Raphael, for letting everybody know to do that. William Cohen, once again, another moderator. Um, we, I saw Doc Vision here. We fixed it. Um, I saw Tech Realm earlier. Good to see you. We haven't seen you in a while. There you are. So 
We're back on track here. Let's get to working here. Let's get this thing unboxed. Here it is, the Dell XPS 13. We'll get to your comments and questions in a moment. Uh, but first, let's get it out of the box. Let me clear everything off. Let me stand up. And let's get this thing done here. So this cost over $2,000. We'll get into the pricing and all that. It's not cheap, but we'll, uh, we'll price one out in a little bit. There's my knife. In fact, I don't think I even need the knife because... You had a little tab there, so that makes it easier. And there is the Dell logo. This is a little bit different packaging, a more eco-friendly packaging here. Comes in like a, a box here within the with inside. So this is the unit. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's see what else they give you. There's just more cardboard there. And I guess everything else is inside the inner box. So pretty basic packaging. And there's another tab here. Let's lift that tab. And we get that open. And it says, welcome to Dell. Let's do great things together. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, it feels good already. Uh, this is the unit itself. Now you can... See here, we've got some documentation. We've got, let's see what the documentation has to say. Now, it was a whole big thing to try to get this thing. And it's the 9320. Some more information there. You can see it there. Okay. So some documentation. A very compact adapter here. Look at this, 60 watts. So it's a little bit smaller than last year's model. 60 watts. I mean, look at this thing. It's almost like a smartphone charger. So that's, uh, that's in the box as well. Um, we get the USB-C cable. There it is. It's all black. And I think I have the platinum model. We'll find out in a moment. Hopefully they gave me the right one. So this is a 3.5 millimeter audio adapter to... USB-C, now we're going to talk about that in a moment because there is no headphone jack on this. And then there is another USB-C to USB-A adapter. It is tiny, tiny. So that's that. And then, of course, the extension cord as well. There you can see it there. So pretty interesting packaging. Uh, again, eco-friendly Materials, I think it's also all biodegradable, recycled materials. Um, so pretty interesting. So let's put this away, and we'll get to the unit. And this is the unit. Oh, this is going to be gorgeous. I could tell already. Oh, wow. There it is. So this is the Platinum. Um, there's also the Graphite model. So we'll take a look at the 9310 from last year. And let me just take a look at the new comments before we get there. Very, very nice. So we get on the left side, you get a USB, um, USB-C, Thunderbolt 4. And then another one on the right side. So lack of ports on this for sure. So just the two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. And let's see if we can open it with one finger. And we sort of can. Oh, wow. So let's adjust this a little bit. That's, that's good. So this is the Dell. And as you can see, very minimalistic look. Oh, this is just gorgeous. Wow. So I forgot how good this looks. Um, we'll get to your comments and questions in a moment, but just let's take in take this in. So this is the touchpad. It's a haptic touchpad. I believe between the old keys is where the space is for that. So we'll be testing all that. Oh, wow. The keyboard feels absolutely great. I remember this in the January meeting I had with Dell for CES in New York. Really liking it. Very clean design. I mean, this is just an absolutely gorgeous design. The keyboard is absolutely, I love this keyboard. I didn't know if I was going to love it. 
feels good so far. Now, this is the OLED model. I went with the 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM. I only went with 512 gigabytes of storage. It's not a huge deal for me. I can change it out myself. Let me see if there's screws on the bottom. Yeah, so there's T5 Torx screws all around it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll be able to put in a bigger SSD, hopefully. We'll see. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. I can't stress that enough. I'm really happy I went with the Platinum. I don't think this is going to be a problem for fingerprints. No SD card reader, people. No headphone jack. No, <laughs> pretty much no ports. Uh, bold design. Now, this also doesn't have a function row. Instead, it has, with physical keys, it has a capacitive row, and we'll see it when we power it on. Um, the storage could be soldered in. I don't know. We'll find out. Either way, I'm fine. I don't store. I use everything cloud-based pretty much anyway. It's not a huge deal for me. But uh, as far as this capacitive row, we'll see how that's going to turn out. Uh, very, very minimalistic look. And if you're a fan of that, which I am, uh, I'm very happy with it. So, all right. So, no SD card reader, as I mentioned. No uh, headphone jack. Two USB Thunderbolt 4 ports. And that's it. Let's see if we have some juice in it. If I could find the power button. This must be the power button, I guess, right there. Let me plug it in. I have a my 65-watt adapter here from last year. Let's just use that to see if that will give it some juice. All right, let's take some of your questions. What do you think? Only concern is the touch bar. Yeah, we're going to find out. Now, for those that don't want a touch bar, there is a new... XPS 13, more traditional one, the 9315, and that one has um, uh, the, the the physical keys, right? So that looks really good as well, and hopefully I'll get it. There's some new colors on that, so hopefully that will be good as well. We've got 89 of you. Good to see everybody, and um, let me put myself down there. Let's see if I could turn this thing on. There it is. It says XPS Oh, wow, that screen is going to be gorgeous. I can tell right away. You can see the side shot there. Uh, really, really looking good. So what is this? You have plugged a lower power wattage adapter. No, actually, it has more than the one it comes with. So let me just continue that and see what it does. If not, I'll use the original adapter. And there we can get our first look at the capacitive buttons. Now, in real life, these are not flashing. It's the camera. So they went with that touch bar instead of or they went with these capacitive bar instead of the physical keys let me know what you think about it is it something you're happy with uh, you can see it here they're not flashing too bad over here again it's hard to show you on camera but in real life it looks fine this seems to be a machine for air travelers yeah it's less than it's like two and a half pounds so i think it's 2.48 pounds a one point something kilo maybe a little bit over a kilogram uh very 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 light and as we get that first boot on this, we're in the United States. And this is a touch display. So I have the OLED display. It's a 3.5K OLED. We saw it last year with a 9310 uh, as we get this set up. Um, and let me get it connected to my Wi-Fi. Um, let me put it on me for a second. Let me get this all set up. As we get this, we had a little bit of technical difficulties early, but I think we fixed it. A lot of people are not a fan of that. Now, you, this, this does start about 1300 Tech Realm. Uh, that is correct. My, I paid a little less than 2000 with tax here in Nevada. It came into about 2100 or so, uh, maybe a little bit less. And I'll, we can check out the pricing in a moment. But let's get this set up a little bit here. Um, 3.5K OLED. Now, you could also get it in a 4K UHD plus, which is also a touch display, and that's a higher resolution, but it's IPS. Or you can go with a full HD plus non-touch as the entry level model has. And there you go. The silver on the deck looks darker than the lid. Yes, this is definitely darker than the lid. This is like last year, and we can take a look at last year as well as we get through the uh, agreement here. I'm going to skip naming this for now. Now, it does have an, 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 uh, an HD webcam, not a full HD. So uh, let me sign in over here for a minute. Let me just put it on me. Mm 
digging the keyboard. Okay, as I'm putting my account in, this is pretty exciting stuff. Now I have the Core i7 12, uh, let's see, I have the Core i7 12, 60p. I didn't go for the 1280p. So let's see, let's take a look at this for a moment. Let's get this set up. This is the Windows Hello. And I got to keep looking at it. And that's it. That's how easy it was to set that up. So the 1260p will have 12 cores. It'll be eight efficiency cores and four performance cores. Let me set up a pin. Okay. And we have, oh, wow, we have over 100 watching. Hey, everybody, it's good to see you again. I haven't done a live stream in a while. Thought this warranted one. So I'm glad everybody could show up. We had a little bit of difficulty early on. I had to restart the live stream. So we're back now. Looks like everything is good. We're going to set this up as a new device. Now, this capacitive row that you're seeing, if you're joining us late, is a, um, it's not flickering in real life, just so you know. So I have the Core i7-1260P. Now, the touchpad is working pretty well. It's a capacitive touchpad or haptic touchpad, I should say and has haptic feedback and working well so far. I've had no issues locating it. It just feels natural. There's no indicators here where it, where it starts and where it begins, but it looks like it ends by the alt keys. Yeah, that's pretty much where I think it starts and ends. And I think it's actually pretty good so far. So very good so far. I have to play with it a little bit more, but I, I don't have any issues with it. And we're just getting through the initial setup here. Uh, yeah, thanks, Tech Realm. No need to spam. Yeah, people, don't. If you have a question, let me know, but I'll try to get to it. But I'm trying to get through this initial setup, and then we'll get to more of your questions and comments uh, later. Um, I don't want anybody using my information, but who knows if they'll use it anyway. <laughs> so there we go. Let's, uh, let, me put this, let me put it to this uh, camera here. Okay. So yeah, please don't spam the chat. All right, so we got it out of the box. What have we learned so far? The build quality is excellent so far. The keyboard is phenomenal. I'm really liking this keyboard, and I love this very minimalist nature. Now, the reason they didn't go with physical keys on this capacitive row here, because it was they were able to do better thermal uh, development out of it, get better thermal, supposedly. Of course, I'll do my testing. We'll get an idea of that. Uh, in my upcoming full review, so we'll see. Um, you love the laptop, you have it, and it's kind of strange at first, but I love it. I tell you what, I'm loving this minimalist look here. I mean, this absolutely gorgeous design. Now, yeah, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So the the SKU that I went with, and we'll price one out in a little bit, the SKU I went with, Core i7, 1260p, not the 1280p. I just decided 1260p will be good. I went with uh, 32 gigabytes of, DD, of LP DDR5 RAM. That's the most you can do on this. It's soldered in. I went with 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. It's PCIe Gen 4. I don't care. The storage is not a big deal to me. And then I went with the OLED display. It's a 3.5K OLED display. It's 60 hertz. And obviously, you could go with a UHD plus IPS display, or you can go with a... Full HD plus, so that will be non-touch, and we have our first uh, look at the display here. And I could tell you right off the bat, it is absolutely gorgeous. Wow! Let me so let me use the capacitive buttons here to and let's see how far back it goes. It goes as far back as you see here, and the capacitive buttons are pretty responsive. So one of the thing concerns I had was, well, how responsive would it be? And we have the volume up and down. We've got a uh, mute button there and then we got print screen we have all the things that you want to have on a function row except it's capacitive and uh, that's pretty much it so if I press the function oh so if you press the function button it changes and it's hard to see it on the camera here 
Let me see if you could see it there. And if I press the function, it changes what it is. So it gives me the F buttons, the function buttons, the escape and delete keys. But if I remove it, oh, so the escape and delete keys stay there. They're static. But if I want the F1 through F12 keys, you hit the function button. So pretty much acts as if it, the physical keys and so forth. The brightness looks pretty good. I think this has got to be about 400 nits, I would say, just looking at it uh, based on my experience with this. Uh, let's go into the My Dell and let's get the thermal profile here. So, and then we'll we'll download a couple of benchmarks here and maybe we can run the Geekbench. But let's take a few of your questions so far. It's the Dell XPS 13 Plus here, 9320 in the studio. We have 121 of you. These are Thunderbolt 4 ports, according to Dell. Let me just make sure that that, that is correct. Um, let me go to Dell XPS 13 Plus, and I'm just looking it up here. And if I go to the tech specs at the, the Dell site, it says, as far as the connections, uh, Thunderbolt 4 with display port and power delivery. There are two of them, one on each side. There's no headphone jack. There's no, um, there's no, what should I say, um, any other ports other than the USB-C uh, Thunderbolt 4. I'm not registering this right now. And then let me go here. Let me see if they give the same thing. So, yeah, here's the power. And if I go to the settings here, I can go to the uh, thermal. Let's go to the thermal profiles. Right now it's on optimized, but if I put it on ultra performance, which I'll put it on right now, I want to see what the fan noise is like. So far, I hardly hear anything, but we haven't really pushed it. Right now, it's on balance. Let me put it on best performance. Okay, so let me download Chrome here for a minute. Give me a second as we get that set up. So we're doing everything live here as we always do. I'm going to go with the dark theme because that's what I like but I'm not gonna use the Edge browser. So let me, well, this is downloading Chrome. Let me go there, boom, all right. And absolutely gorgeous so far. This is, this. I'm glad I went with this Platinum because it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, the I saw both when I went to CES in New York uh, at the media event uh, for Dell, remember I went there, and um, and it was really gorgeous as far as that graphite model. That's going to show a little bit more fingerprints, my guess is, but we'll we'll see it once I get one of those into the studio. Hopefully, I'll get one. Just putting in my credentials for Gmail, for Chrome rather. All right, this is a really nice keyboard. And then let's do a couple of benchmarks just to get an idea. And then we'll take some of your questions as I do my two-factor authentication here. When we started earlier, for those joining us late, we originally had started a different live stream, but we had too many te technical difficulties. I seem to have fixed it here. Uh, I'm only doing 1080p 60 now only, but it's still good enough. Um, all right, so I have Chrome loaded in here. And I'm going to load in, let me go to this camera. I'm going to load in, um, let me get rid of all this stuff here. Let me go to, let's go to Geekbench. Now, I'm on ultra performance mode. We're plugged in. So let's download that. Now, this is the Core i7, like I said, 1260p. It has 12 cores, eight efficiency cores, and four performance cores. So while that's downloading that. Let me put myself down there. Let's see some of your questions. How is the battery on it, Andrew? Well, it's a, uh, as far as a battery size is concerned, it has a three-cell, 55-watt-hour battery. I, I'll take a look at it. Um, we'll take a look at the camera as well, Tech Realm. Yeah, I stopped using uh, also Edge as well. So the camera on it is an HD camera. It's a IR camera, meaning it's a Windows Hello. It's not a full HD. We'll get a look at it in a moment, but let's run our first benchmark. In fact, you know what? Let's uh, take a look at the camera right now. 
Now, one thing I noticed, there's no camera shutter on it. So for those that want it, looks pretty good so far for a 720p webcam. Um, let me load it in into... And we can take a look at it real quick. Let me unplug this. And let's move over to this camera. And there we are. So this is the Dell XPS 13 9320. It's the XPS 13 Plus. And this is a 720p camera. Uh, Windows, hello. Actually, it's not bad. This is a, one of the better ones I've seen. So not too bad. Uh, as I bump up the brightness here. Um, definitely usable. I don't know the array mics until I do my full testing on it, but we'll see. And I think so far it looks pretty good. Let me know what you think about it. But again, not 1080p, which is a little bit disappointing. You like it, Mallory? Good. All right. Yeah, better. Give me an XPS slab. Well, we'll be getting a two-in-one soon, right? So they announced a two-in-one. That's coming. Two-in-one isn't a convertible. It's a tablet with a detachable keyboard. Yes, it's going to be more Surface-like. That is correct. So this is the camera. Looks pretty good to me. I don't have too much to complain about it. It's actually one of the better 720p cameras I've seen. That's pretty good. We could bring in the 9310 from last year. We can take a look at that as well. But right now, that's the camera. So pretty good. Let me unplug that. Give me a second. Hold on. Now, one of the problems I see already is the lack of ports. Now, I have to unplug that to use my HDMI cable. There's no HDMI, HDMI port on this. There's no hub that has an HDMI port that we did get with the XPS 15, if you saw that video. All right, let's uh, turn off the camera there. So pretty good in terms of the camera. And let's, uh, let's do our first benchmark here. Okay, let's do the Geekbench. Let me load it in. And say yes here. We're doing everything live here. Super chat, super stickers, memberships, all appreciated, people. I had to go out of pocket for this. So uh, once again, I took one for the team. As we have 129 of you watching, which is pretty good uh, for an unannounced, really. Um, so here you can see, and let's go to, um, you can see it here. So you can sort of see it, but I'll tell you, it's the Core i7-1260P, 12 cores, as I mentioned, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Let's run a CPU benchmark. I don't hardly hear the fans on this, or if there's one fan, I don't know. We have to open it up. I'll do that in the unboxing video that I'll release probably in the morning or Monday at latest, but I'll get that out. So while that's doing that, Let me uh, take some more of your questions and comments. Yeah, nice. You like the camera, Raphael. Good to see that you like it. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Pretty good. Lack of ports is definitely an issue so far. I definitely agree. Yeah, this is a, definitely a dongle life. Where Apple's moving away from that life, they're moving towards it. But I got to say, I love the look of this so far. But only the two ports on this. That's all you get. And they do give you that 3.5 millimeter to USB C adapter in the box that I showed you when I unboxed it. But that's um, not really a solution in the sense because then you lose a USB-C port. And then, of course, once you're plugged in, you then are, have no ports at that point. So a little bit of a negative there. So the air intake. So let's, uh, you can see here, and I don't know if these are speakers or we could sort of, let me get this over here. Um it feels a little bit warm. These might be speakers. I don't know. They're supposed to have improved speakers on this. In fact, as far as the audio is concerned, there are dual speakers on this, tweeter and woofer, stereo speakers, four watts total. Uh, it has a vent here. You can see, it's sort of see it there. And then if I go here, you can see it there. There's the vent. And then I hear the fan right now i don't know if it's a single or du dual fan but i hear it pretty quiet while it's running the benchmark uh 
Okay. So while that's doing that, let me push over to here. Okay, so our first benchmark and very, very impressive. Wow. So let's uh, let's let me tell you what it is. 1592 single core, 9124 multi-core. Pretty impressive. I don't know if there's stuff running in the background as well, but pretty good. Um, for thin and light such as this, for that kind of score, it's like double what we got last year on the 9310. I think I got about 5,000 or maybe a little bit less. Do I find the spacing good? Yes, I do actually find the spacing pretty good so far. Again, I just took it out of the box, but my initial impressions is pretty good. Let me take a print screen of this so I don't I keep it and I can be able to use this. Hold on. And having the capacitive button is not an issue because I was able to take a print screen with pressing the Windows key and the print screen key. Not a bad thing. Yeah, I so far the keyboard. You know, it's not island-shaped keys. These are uh, together, very closely spaced together, and very, very comfortable, a lot better than I thought it would be. It beats the M2. Um, these are pretty impressive numbers, and I haven't seen the M2 numbers yet. Has anybody seen any uh, reliable sources? Because that that's a pretty good multi-core score, and I didn't even really push this yet. Well, I didn't. I don't know if I have things in the background, but that's a pretty good one. Now we got our first super chat from our good friend Handquake. How are you, my friend? Five dollar super chat. Thank you. Um, just noticed my two year badge. Wish the keyboard was black. Yes, two years. We now have badges that let you know how long you've been with us. I really appreciate appreciate it, Handquake. You've been a tremendous support to the channel, and I can't thank you enough. Uh, really, and two years with us means a lot to me personally. And um, so I want to give you a big thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So the M2 got 89.28 in the Geekbench 5. So we're seeing better score here. Uh, 91.24, 15.92. I don't know what the single core was. Uh, that looks like it had a better single core. But again, I don't know. Um, we'll do. A, I'll run some more tests on this. Let's uh, let's see how fast the SSD is. Let me do the um, Crystal Disk Mark test because it's supposed to be Gen 4 on this. Let's do. Actually, you know what? Let's before we do that, let's run the the open CL of the Geekbench, and this will give us um, the graphic score on the Geekbench. I just, I'm curious to see what the uh, the graphics on the, these are Iris XE graphics, so I'm not expecting a huge difference than previous models for that, that run the same chipset. So this has, doesn't this, have, so is, that, is it a 28 watt CPU, number one? It has 12 cores, eight efficiency cores, and four performance cores. So where we had quad core last year, we had only four cores, we now have 12 total cores. Yeah, so eight, like I said, eight efficiency cores and four performance cores. And very impressive. And as far as, as far as what I've seen so far this year regarding that. Yes, you're looking at the OLED option. This is the OLED option. Um, this is a 3.5K display. In fact, um, I could probably just show you the display settings real quick. This has um, 3456 by 2160, 3.5K OLED display. So what you get, obviously, with the OLED display is the really deep blacks, the really vibrant colors, the high contrast, uh, the really great this sharpness that you want to get out of OLED. The downside to the OLED is you won't get quite as good battery life, but... They've get, been getting better, obviously, with that. So we'll see when I do my my battery test on this. We'll we'll get an idea. Is the Zephyrus G14 2022 worth it or not? Absolutely. I took a look at it and I reviewed it. It's very good. So yeah, you have, should have no problem with that one. For those joining us late, the we now have 104 of you watching, and this is the Dell XPS 13 Plus, the 9320. This capacitive row that you see is blinking only on the camera. It's not in real life. So for those that are wondering, there you go. It's not fully beating the M1. It has a 1700 single and a 7700 multi-core. So the difference between the single and multi-core, multi-core is important, but single core is important as well. So, uh, so far, it looks impressive, but again, I still need to do more testing. Can you show Geekbench GPU test? I'm showing that right now. And... 
uh, did I run the wrong test? In fact, it went down a little bit because I had things probably because I was running. Oh, because I was running the other thing, 80-80 there. So, but the, and in fact, it went up. Was that 1644? Was that more than the other one? So we went from 1592, but the second test that I did did 1644, but the multi-core went down. But we'll have to run a few of them. We'll take averages out of them. But so far, we're seeing about 1644 uh, on this for the single core. And then the best I got was 9124 in the multi-core so far. Um, let me do the, oh, I know why that happened. First of all, I don't like it so zoomed in so let's uh change the scale on this oh it's at 300 percent. i don't i think that's too much i'm gonna go to 250 and that's a lot better so let me run the compute benchmark that's what i meant to run and it's running vulcan interesting so we'll see what that does instead of the open cl it's running the vulcan well that'll be pretty interesting for those according to william for those who like limited port selection no sd card this is great for those others look elsewhere you know, it's like this, uh, Tuck, um, for uh, William. You know that's the case. It's Everybody's use case is a little bit different. Everybody has needs that are different. So if you need ports, this is not for you. But if you're a traveler that wants something stylish that has pretty good performance so far in terms of these synthetic benchmarks, then you might want to look at this. I'm absolutely loving the keyboard more than I, more than I thought I would. So that's a good sign. And the touchpad, which is this um, haptic feedback, that is this area over here is working pretty well. Yeah, 300% is ridiculous. I put it down to 250, it seems much more reasonable. Yeah, you can do a docking station and of course it has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on each side. So the negatives I would say are the lack of the ports, of course. Uh, and then of course no headphone jack for those that want it. So this is the Dell, this is the score I got, 19,041 on the uh, Vulcan score on the Geekbench, let me take a screenshot. And let's see if it gives me the OpenCL. And here's the OpenCL. Let's run that one real quick. The speedometer 2.0 benchmark. Yeah, if we have time, if not, I'll put it in the up on the unboxing video. How it, How is the tactile feedback on the touch bar, especially the escape key? The touch bar is a major deal for me. So. As I'm touching this, it doesn't give you any haptic feedback. It just, you just touch it, it works. So I don't feel any like vibration or anything. At least not that I can detect. It just works. You just press it and it works as if you're pressing a physical key. There's no, there's no better way for me to um, explain that. So uh, you just press it and it works. Can you open the lid with one hand? Yeah, I sort of could do it, but I I don't know if it's because of the slippery table. We'll do it again in the video. Can you please hold and increase volume, et cetera? So if I hold it, yeah, I don't feel any kind of vibration. So it works. I mean, if, when you just hold it, see if I'm holding it, right now it's a 64 on the volume and went up to 100 so you just hold it so you don't have to continuously press it you can just hold it and it'll increase so there you go two point i think four eight pounds uh, let me just check here the weight is 2.71 pounds for the full hd plus for the 4k plus 2.77 pounds and then for the oled Oh, so I'm sorry, 2.71 for the full HD plus or the 4K plus, which is the IPS, and 2.77 pounds or 1.26 kilograms with the OLED. So this one is 2.77 pounds, pretty light, pretty thin. So there you go. And here we got a pretty much identical score on that, 19,608. Just took another screenshot. Slower than the N1 and GPU, M1 MacBook Pro Core 8, it's uh, 21,900. M2, as per, shows uh, 30,000 in Geekbench GPU. I think M2 is still better. Probably. We'll know. We'll find out when I get one into the studio. Uh, but this is impressive. Uh, I got to tell you so far, I'm not disappointed with it. That's for sure. Let's, uh, let, me, let me close the Geekbench. And let's go to Crystal Disk Mark. Hold on. I want to test the speeds of the SSD here while I download that. 
All right. You go to the download. And this will measure how fast the SSD is. Now, I went only with the 512 on this one. I just had, I, I didn't want to break the bank. I already did. I might as well just, probably should have gone with the one terabyte. But the truth is I hardly use the storage on the device. I use mostly cloud-based at this point. All right, so let me extract that. Yeah, it looks great. I, I, I have no problem. The looks-wise, I think this is a much better-looking laptop than the M2 Air. I, I don't think there's any question. And you're not contending with any notch or any ridiculous things like that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's a I don't like it. But, you know, I think this is a better-looking device. And the performance is very, very similar so far. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, is it comparable with the Dell? Is it compatible with the Dell cell phone? What Dell cell phone? Yeah, so there's an app on there. If I think what you're asking me, does it? Can you can you see your text messages and all that? The Dell Connect, I think that's what they call it, or whatever they call it. Yes, um, Will Wilvin, how are you? Uh, hello, Andrew. Is this XPS 13 better than the MacBook Pro Air M1? If you could pick one of them on the rest of your life, which would you pick? Oh, I would pick this. Uh, there's no question. The M1 Air is great, but the the display is not as good, in my opinion. Oh, wow, we're going to get some pretty good scores here. Uh, the lack of upgradability. I, this one, I don't know if there's any upgradability either, so we'll have to see. Uh, lack of a touchscreen, of course. To me, I like having the touchscreen. I like having OLED. I, I just, this is, this is, and I like the style of this better. There's not even, uh, not even a close to me, not even close. Everything soldered but the SSD. So I would imagine the SSD is upgradable, and I'm going to open it up. I'm not going to open it up here. I'll do it in the video because I don't want to waste anybody's time with trying to get it open and so forth. And I don't want to scratch it. I want to take my time. So we'll, we'll do it because I've done that before <laughs> when I rush things. So good to see everybody. Wow, we're already live streamed for almost 42 minutes. So we have 125 of you watching. We're taking the first look at the Dell XPS 13 9320. It's the XPS Plus, XPS 13 Plus, I should say. And it's got the 3.5K OLED display, 13.4 inches. It weighs 2.77 pounds or 1.26 kilograms. That's for the OLED model. But if you go with the Full HD Plus or the 4K Plus, 2.71 pounds or 1.23 kilograms, a little bit lighter. Not much, but a little bit. Yeah, the bezels are ridiculous on the M1. Now, the M2 has a little bit of a design change. Hopefully, we'll get one in very soon. And we'll be able to see, and so far the reads are looking good on this, 6,763 6, so far on that right looks really, really good. Vegas is good. We had a pretty nice day today. Uh, we had a little bit of a heat wave that seems to have broken a little bit today, so it's been pretty good. Didn't break 90 degrees. You're going to go to the F1 race. I'm not a huge uh, F1, but you know, if somebody gives me tickets, I will go. Uh, for those joining us late, I will be going to Berlin to attend the press briefing, uh, a media event. Uh, I can't talk about it just yet, but anybody in Berlin from the 28th to the 30th of this month, maybe we can do a get-together somewhere if we get enough people. Can you game on it? Yeah, this has, um, and again, I still need to do all my testing, but this has Iris XE graphics. I would imagine this is the 96 executional units or EUs, I believe, on this, so... I think you should be able to do some gaming if you lower the settings. Again, not meant to be a gaming laptop. It's more of a thin, ultra-portable laptop, uh, but you should be able to game on some of the games if you lower the settings, obviously. So, so far, this is looking pretty good. So upgradable SSD is always good. Uh, if you want to expand out the storage, save some money, or maybe do it down the road, you have the option, not with the Mac, unfortunately, with the M1 or the M2, unfortunately but that's the trade-off when you go with that so there's a trade-off on both give or take or whatever it might be so there you go and after we run this we can do maybe cinebench test real quick we can do either the r15 which the, or the r23 takes a little bit of time but we can do it because it's a more extended uh look at it and let me listen for the fans hold on and then we got to test the sound as well 
Very, very quiet. And one of the reasons that Dell went with this capacitive row instead of going with physical keys was to be able to have a better thermal envelope. So we're able to do better cooling on this. And so far, it's been really quiet as far as fan noise is concerned. So there you go. And again, that's the other thing, Edwin B saying, I'll take Windows over Mac, just the Windows snapping alone. You like that? Yeah, I like that too. Um, I use both platforms, to be honest, but I'm actually live streaming it once again from a Mac, from my 2019 uh, MacBook Pro 16. But I like both, obviously, and I'm very, very impressed so far with this. So we'll see. So looks pretty good. Look at that scores here. 60, 67, 63 on the read, 5,041 on the right. Very impressive. And that is with the 512 gigabyte. I imagine if you go with the one terabyte or above, you probably get even higher speed, speeds on that. Let me take a screenshot. Okay, so we did that. Now let me go here. Let me go to Cinebench R23. Actually, let's do the 15 first, actually, because that one's a much quicker. And then we can do that one after. So while that's downloading that, let me download the test here real quick from the author. Yeah, this is not a review yet, Hassan, but it will be coming. This is just an unboxing, and I decided why not just do it live. If I'm going to be unboxing right now, why not let everybody see how the sausage is made, so to speak. So I'm glad everybody's here. We have a nice turnout, 116. We had a little bit of technical difficulty earlier when the sync was, the audio was out of sync with the video. So I restarted the live stream and now it seems to be a lot better. So that's what we've been doing here so far. Um, in fact, I could probably take down that other one if I go to my settings here. And we got another super chat from Edwin B., Ten dollars. All right, my friend. You are a true legend. I really appreciate that. Helps out towards the over two thousand dollars that I spent for this thing. So thank you very much, Edwin. Much, much appreciated. Clemens Tech is the speakers on par with the MacBook. We're gonna find out. In fact, um, let's do a quick sound test. We can do one real quick right now. Let me hold on. Let me go to Epidemic Sound. And by the way, there's a 10% discount for anybody who wants to get Epidemic Sound, which will allow you to use copyright-free music with a license from Epidemic Sound that allows you to put it into videos and live streams like this. Uh, there's a link. If you go through my link, you get a 10% discount. So let's, uh, let's do a quick informal sound test. What do you say? Um, and you can see it here. This is uh, Epidemic Sound, and I'll just turn the mic on. Now, let's pick up a, a song here. Hold on, let me go back here. Let's take a listen. pretty good i gotta say it's actually pretty good i'll do some testing uh but i gotta say the volume was very good the bass was decent which is not something i was expecting on a thin and light ultra portable like this but pretty good so far what is the battery life looking like i don't know on all models 2022 i'm thinking to obtain a uh, 17th it will last the macbook pro 16 
So you're thinking of i7? I don't know what you're trying to say, but uh, battery life depends on which model you get, how big the battery is, what you're doing with it. There are many factors that go into that. I don't know what to say. It's a battery that's a size, let me see, let me tell you, 50, it is a 55 watt battery, a watt hour battery, three cell 55 watt hours. Uh, I just took it out of the box. I don't have any numbers as far as battery testing that will be coming very soon. The laptop is thin and it's a shame we only get 60 hertz. Yeah, let me just double check that. Let me go into the display settings and advanced display. Yeah, it's only 60 hertz. But again, you know, the battery life is going to be a chief uh, concern here. If you go above 60 hertz, just keep in mind, that's going to eat the battery life. If you go to 90, you go to 120, you're going to get a much less battery life. So I'm sure that was a consideration that went into that. But again, would have been nice to have the option, but not, not here. It's fully aluminum. This is glass. This is glass. This, this feels like glass to me. This is all aluminum on the top deck here. This is all aluminum right here. And who cares about thermals when the Macs can't run all the programs and games? And that's the other thing. Um, and I agree. If you you know you're not if you're a gamer, you stay away from the Mac. It's not it's not not the platform for you. There's no qu question about that. Given now that the XPS 15 with or without dedicated graphics card with the same 86 watt hour battery exists, I wonder what is the battery life difference between the two? Well, you got to understand, well, here's a couple of things that we need to cons consider here. This is a smaller display, 13.4 inches versus 15 point, what is it, 15.6. And then um, on this one, this is also OLED, the, like the one I checked out with the XPS 15, uh, so that does play a factor into it. OLEDs tend to get less battery life than IPS. So those are some of the factors you need to take into consideration. No, this is not a gaming laptop, but you have more options to game on this. You can connect to an external GPU. Uh, obviously, the Thunderbolt 4 port allows you to do that. And then you can play some AAA titles with that. So you have more options when it comes to um, the XPS over the Mac it's just a platform. There's no reason that the Mac shouldn't have optimized drivers and stuff like that. They just don't. Developers are not making games for it. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and share this channel to all your favorite social media. Thank you, Raphael. I really appreciate that. And so far, we have 110 people watching, but we only have 71 likes. What's the deal, people? <laughs> hit that like button, please. Help me out. Do me a favor here, okay? Please. I just shelled out, what, $2,100 for you for this? or Really for me, but I'm just trying to make it like, like I'm doing it for you, which I am. Um, and I'm the first one that seems to have it so far. I know Dave 2D had it, but he had, a, I think, an engineering sample. This is an actual retail sample, so here we go. Not everyone games, plus when Apple develops better games, it won't heat up like a fire is starting a computer. Speaking of which, so far... We ran a few benchmarks. It's not overly hot, that's for sure. And I can't hear the fan. The fan's not on right now because we're really not doing anything. It shouldn't go on. But I have it on the ultra performance mode. It's just a matter of if you like listen, I like the listen, I like the Mac platform. I'm using it right now at the live stream. I love the efficiency of the M1, how cool they stay, even under heavy load. The great battery life you get out of get out of it, but but there are some things you can't do with it. Gaming is not really good on that in general. Obviously, you shouldn't get it if you're a gamer, if that's what you're going to do on it. And if you need to run Windows, it's not ideal either because you'll have to use an emulator and stuff like that. So it's just a matter of what you like. And again, I like the Macs, and I'm going to review the M1 Air 2, the M2, and I'm looking forward to it. Tim's Motorcycle Diary. I own the 2020 Razor Blade 15 model, the base model with the 4K OLED. It's worth it. Watching 4K content is movies. YouTube is usually visually stunning. And I agree. That's one of the benefits of having such a beautiful display. Let me put on a video here. And you can get an idea. Let me just load it up for one second.
and we could put on the HDR if, it, if I believe it has HD. I think it is HDR. We'll find out. Let me see on the settings, but let me load the video up first. Let me get it queued up. Okay, give me a second while I go to the settings here, and let's take a look at it while it's plugged in. Okay, so we go to display settings. Let me maximize that. And we want to use HDR. And let me switch that over. So right now it's on HDR, okay? Although my live stream's not in high dynamic range, but I'll tell you what my uh, opinion of it is so far. So let's go to the video here. And let me put it on HD. Let me refresh it so it could recognize HDR content here. And this says HDR here. Something with Putin there. I don't know. The... Let me get the right video here. So it's HDR, and let's put it on 4K. Let's see if there's any stuttering or anything. And there you go. It's a glossy display, but it's very, very good. It's not too, it's not, there's not too much gloss, uh, glare or reflection so far, but it is glossy. I noticed a little bit of glare. Viewing angles are very good as well. This is HDR content, people. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous. I agree. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's the display. Now, I want to show you real quick. These are the capacitive buttons for those that are wondering. And if you press it and hold it, you can see it works pretty well. Now, these are the key these are the keys as far as how they are spaced out between each other and very very nice key travel. Believe it more than I thought I was going to expect out of this in terms of key travel and it's actually looking pretty good so now the other question people are going to say well where does this touchpad begin and end well I, it's believe it's between the the alt keys so over here to here it's a pretty nice size and you get pretty good haptic feedback so pretty nice implementation here so that's that Very, very interesting. It is, so, yes, it is haptic. In fact, let's see if I can try to get it uh, so you can hear it. So let's be quiet. That's the haptic engine. So it has a haptic engine, and it, you feel like,
So for those wondering, there it is. Okay, so no audio. Oh, no audio. I must have hit the button. Hold on. Testing, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Okay, I must have hit something. Can you hear me? Testing. It's good now. Okay. I'm not sure what happened there. Okay. Is it delayed? It should be fine now. Okay. Sorry. I must have hit the button when I put the iPhone camera on there. But anyway, but we're back. We can hear you. All right. So we're at uh, an hour already. I don't know how much f further we're going to go. We have uh, 113 of you watching. We had a little bit of technical difficulties today, but there you go. Is it delayed? Good now. Okay. Says good now. I trust Raphael. Okay. All right. Any other questions before we um, run some more benchmarks here? Maybe we could do one more. Now, The we've looked at the audio. It sounded pretty good. We looked at the camera. Looked really good for a full for a HD, not full HD, 720p camera. It's an IR camera. And we also took a look at some benchmarks, early benchmarks, over 9,000 on the uh, multi-core, and it got about 1,600 on the single-core score of the Geekbench. Um, we were going to do the Cinebench test. Let's run one right now. Let me just load it up. Uh, here's a Cinebench. There we go. Let me just... Uh, this will be... We'll, we'll run the 15 because that one is a quick test, and it'll show both CPU and GPU, but I'll do the R23 in my upcoming video because that one is a longer test that takes about 20 minutes for everything to run yes it is over 9,000. in fact um i showed it earlier but we can show it again here um we got some good results out of that so my initial test here was 9124 and 1592 on the single core but then i ran it again and it got 80 80 a little bit less but i think we were running stuff in the background i think that took away from it but a higher single core we got 1644. no the benchmarks is using um this is uh plugged in as you see here you can see it better here it's plugged in and i'm on ultra performance mode so if we go to the my dell app here and you can see it here you go to the power, and let's just double check, and we are right now, if I go to the settings, the thermals, we are on the ultra performance mode, but there's a quiet mode, obviously, but it's been very quiet, even on the ultra performance mode. The, the fan noise has been very quiet, and the optimized mode, which is what it comes with, standard or out of the box, and the cool mode, which would obviously keep it even cooler. If Asus sends it to me, uh, Brightmore, about the Vivo Book S14X or the S16X, uh, I would love to. Great power. Yeah, it's good. I I'm, I'm very happy with the numbers here. Um, and one of the reasons, like I said, according to Dell, when I met with them, they put this capacitive row there instead of physical keys is to allow for better thermal performance on this. And so far, I'm seeing much better thermal performance than last year's model. There is no doubt about it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see an XPS with an AMD processor in it. Uh, not anytime soon. Unfortunately, I'd love to see that. Yeah, a lot of people feel that way. And I've brought it up many times with Dell when I've met with them in person. And, and obviously through my communications with them. This is the only laptop that seems to compare to the Surface. Now, this is more powerful than the one I just did, which was, of course, that budget mid-tier Surface Laptop Go 2, which a lot of people gave me a lot of hatred for reviewing that. And I think it's unfair that people are bashing that device for what it is. I think for what it is and for who it's targeted towards, it's not a bad device. In fact, it's a very nicely made device but it's not for the power user, and I made that very clear in the video. A lot of you were not happy that I reviewed it, but it's the way it is. You know, I have to try to appeal to more than one specific audience. If I can try to expand out the audience, I'm going to try to do it.
McAfee, hum. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to have to remove that uh, once we're done. That's the first thing that's coming off, that crapware is coming off. One of the first things I do, and I didn't do it on the live stream here, but I'll do it once we're done, I'll remove McAfee and any other bloatware. I haven't seen too much other bloatware, but really I've made it known to other OEMs besides um, besides Dell. I said, look, you got to stop with this uh, nonsense with this McAfee crap. So you have the Surface Laptop Studio. Do I have I, similar to the Surface Laptop Studio, you have a dedicated GPU, and that's one of the benefits, of course, of having the Surface Laptop Studio, and that design allows for a dedicated GPU. This is just ultra-small, ultra-portable. I don't know how they would put a discrete GPU on this, and to be honest with you, for the people that are going to get this, uh, are not going to be doing video editing. They're not going to be doing... Uh, high-end stuff like that as far as graphics performance they're going to be taking this on the road on trips they're going to be watching movies on this gorgeous 13.4 13.4 inch oled display they're going to be it's an hdr display and they're going to be uh doing photoshop stuff like that but they're not going to be doing the graphic stuff really intensive stuff but if they wanted to they can connect to an external gpu as i mentioned this, this still does have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now, the negatives here, like I said earlier, is lack of ports, right? So you don't get a headphone jack. They give you the dongle instead. And they uh, there's no HDMI and there's no USB-A. So we haven't seen an HD, uh, a USB-A on, USB on this in a few generations already. For a 13-inch screen size laptop, I would prefer a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. Yeah, this is 16 to 10, by the way, anybody wondering. Um, but that's my preference. I realize some people might not. I'm a huge fan of 3-2. Three to two, You know that with the Surface line and some of the HP stuff that we've looked at. But absolutely, 16-10 uh, to 10 is better than a 16-9. to nine. I think we're well past the 16-9, to nine, with the exception of gamers and people who really just use it for movies that is optimized for 16-9. to nine. I can see you still preferring that aspect ratio. Which processor does it have? It has the Core i7-1260P. It has 12 cores, 8 efficiency cores, and 4 performance cores. It's a 28-watt CPU. It's the P-series, of course. It's not the U-series. So a little bit more performance out of this as far as the CPU is concerned. And um, so there you go. So if you joined us late, I went with that. Now, we can spec out a pricing on this because I'm sure some people have already been curious about it and for those that are interested i did leave links in the description below for not only the 13 but uh the 15 and the 17 that i just reviewed and for those that didn't see those videos you could always just go to my channel and check them out but let me connect this up in one second let me remove that and let me put this on here Okay, so let me um, let me bring over to the. This is the Dell. We're in the Dell right now, and there I am on the bottom there. Let me close this and let me close that, and let's go over to Dell.com. Let me get out of Edge here. Go to Chrome, and I'm in Chrome. And if we do the Dell XPS 13 Plus, let's price one out, and. Here we go. So, you know, this is funny. I, this is really fluctuating in price because it was little, it was cheaper this morning, to be honest with you, when I was looking at this. This was, I think, twelve hundred and something dollars, and then it went up to thirteen hundred, and I think ten dollars, and now it's at thirteen ninety nine. So I'm not really sure what Dell is doing here, to be honest. Uh, you're going to get this on July eighth, and I'm going to talk about it in a moment. The saga, I had to get this thing. It wasn't great. Not Dell's fault totally, but we'll get into it. I think FedEx did their part, of course, in screwing things up. We'll get into that in a moment. But it starts with the Core i5, 1240p. You could get it with Windows 10, 11, Windows 11 Home, I should say, Intel Iris XE graphics, 8 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM. It's 5,200 megahertz, uh, 512 gigs of SSD storage. It's M.2 Gen 4. And the full HD Plus display, non-touch. Oh, it is touch. I'm sorry. It is touch. I think I might have said it was non-touch. I think there's only touch models now. 
Uh, I think I might have said the wrong information earlier, but uh, I'll, I'm not sure if I did, but it is all touch. And then that one comes in the platinum or the graphite, and that will start at $13.99. That's, a, that's actually, $13.99 was actually more than it was this morning. So I'm not really sure what's going on. It's for the new XPS 13 Plus. The new XPS 13, which is next to that, will start more. Now, what I did was I went with the 6, 1260p, which is the middle one here. Um, and then I went with uh, 32 gigabytes. I maxed out the RAM. Never going to have enough RAM. I only went with 512 in terms of the SSD. Really good speed so far. I went with the OLED display option as opposed to the IPS options. And I went with the Platinum. And that came into 1999. And I spent over with the tax and everything, $2,200 or whatever it was. Good to see you, Raphael. Take care. And thank you for stopping by once again, my friend. So the end of the day, you're spending a lot of money on this. Uh, no doubt about it. And it's not cheap, obviously. So uh, you, this is not for those that are looking for a budget laptop. I know somebody just, I, who was it, wanted me to compare it to the Surface Laptop. Can you do a side-by-side -side with the Surface Laptop 13 with screens on? So that's a 12. So if you're talking about the Surface Laptop Go 2, that's a 12.4. I have it here, but it's in the back over there. I'm not going to, I don't think people, I mean, I don't know if anybody wants to see that, but um, they're in a different class altogether. Uh, this is a much more premium device. There's no doubt about it. Compared, I will be comparing it to others. Now, last year was the 9310. We'll get to that in a moment, but that's the price. Now, the new XPS 13 that you see here, and that one is uh, available July 6th. So that'll, you'll get it if you order it now. It has a $9.99 starting price. It's a lot cheaper than the new XPS 13 Plus. That one uh, you can get with a U processor, either the i5-1230U or the i7-1250U, which I just took a look at it on a device I'll be showing very soon. So that's uh, that's nine ninety nine for the entry level model with only eight five twelve full HD non touch. This one has non touch. So the and it comes in sky or umber. This is the umber color, and then the sky color is this one. Kind of, I kind of like both to be honest. And then of course, if you upgrade the s the um, the processor, you go with the RAM. Let's max it all out. One terabyte. Uh, and that's on board. So that may be soldered in, actually, now that I look at this. If it says on board, I think that means it's soldered in, obviously. We'll find out when I get one. Uh, let's go back here, and that's a uh, $14.99. So it's much cheaper, actually, to go with these uh, new XPS 13, the 95, the 9315, than to go with the XPS 13 Plus. Now, there's also the two-in-one, but we won't talk about that today because I don't think that's available to even look at yet. But once it is, I will uh, go into more depth on that, of course, and I will review it. So the this is um, so this SSD here doesn't say it's on board. So I'm thinking this is definitely upgradable. I'll open it up and I'll let everybody know. Now the original XPS 13. This is the one I believe from last year. This is uh, the one I, and they're only showing the i3 and the i5. I think they no longer are selling the i7 here. And that's $1169.99 starting price. And only eight gigabytes now. You cannot get above that. So they're really limiting the amount that you can get. That's the frost exterior with the white Arctic uh, or the platinum silver with the black carbon fiber deck. So that's the pricing here. Pretty interesting stuff. What do you think? on that so i wanted to do something but i can't remember what i wanted to do maybe old age is uh setting in here um let's take a look and i'll bring on last year's model here so we can see mine's a little bit dirty this is the 9310 a little bit scratched and dirty, but we we'll live with it. Um, so let's see if this we can open this with one finger. You can. Good. This one. 
you can. So this is the Arctic White. This is the brand new XPS 13 Plus. Um, this also has the OLED display. So they have the same type of display. Um, you can see it here. To give you an idea, uh, very nice looking devices. There's no question they're both looking good. Insert D brand. Yeah, I don't work with them. I'm not a, an affiliate of theirs. But if D brand's watching, they want to send some money my way, I won't object. We have 96 of you watching. So the live stream looks pretty good. All right, let me see if I missed any of your questions. This is perfect doctor laptop. Yeah, I can see a doctor uh, walking around with one of these. One of the surgeons I work with loves the XPS 13, always has his in the OR. He'll probably buy this. They're actually quite striking in person, the, this one more so. So this is the new one. This is last year's model. And you can see the top-down shot. Um, I actually prefer this. This is just a stunning look to me. I appreciate that, Barbaru Live. Uh, really means a lot. Thank you. So the quality control has been an issue in Dell, but they've been getting better. But here's my saga. <laughs> so I ordered this on May 4th of this year, May 4th, about six weeks ago, actually. What's today? Today's the 18th. And um, so I was originally supposed to get this on... They said June 23rd. It would be delivered by June 23rd. Then they moved it up. They were going to ship it on June 4th. So I got really excited, and I said, oh, this is going to be great. They're ahead of schedule, and I'm going to get it. And then it just never – I got an alert from FedEx that they the uh, um, a tracking number, and then it showed that they still didn't receive it. And every day I would keep checking, and every day – no update it would still it still didn't arrive to the local carrier which is fedex so i kept calling if I, nobody knew anything so finally um i got some answers and they said well it didn't arrive in the united states until the 15th okay so once it arrived on the 15th i said okay this is great it said i will get it on the 16th yeah fedex you know where this is going so I thought I was going to have it on the 16th. So I was going to do a live stream. I was going to plan my videos around it and so forth. So the 16th come and go. And during the day, I get an alert that there is an exception to that track. You know, that, that is, it was on the delivery. It said it was on the delivery truck and ready to be delivered. And, and of lo and behold, I get some weird exception. And it shows in red that, that there was a, the barcode couldn't be read. It was on the truck. They were going to deliver it to me, but they couldn't read the barcode. They had to re put a new barcode on it, which sounded like, you know what, horseshit to me. And it turned out that that's probably what it was. So they put a new barcode and they said, don't worry. And I spoke to some customer representative. They're going to deliver it anyway. The same day on the 16th. Today's the 18th, by the way. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting like a jerk waiting thinking i'm going to do a live stream waiting waiting and nothing happens and then it says delivery date pending <laughs> so i call fedex nobody has a clue on what the f is going on very very stupid and then um i called dell and i called dell and i said hey you you know, once again, this is not the first time I've had a problem with Dell using FedEx. If you heard my story, I think I told it last year, when I bought my 9510, the 15-inch, another cluster F from there. So, yeah, pretty much, uh, Carl, looking, waiting for that goddamn truck to come. But anyway, so they have no clue where it is, and then they, they're, now they're starting to lie to me. I said, well, what is this nonsense with the barcode not being readable, and that'll read put a new barcode why should that affect anything once the barcode's on there all you got to do is scan it and just deliver it well apparently it never made it back onto the truck once it was once they put the barcode on it so it didn't get delivered on the 16th then i get i wake up in the next morning on the 17th and i check the fedex app for all my shipments i get quite a bit of shipments obviously as you might imagine and it says it'll be delivered on the 17th, today, that the 17th, which was the 17th, by the end of the day. And so I'm thinking, all right, well, maybe we got a shot here. 
you know, but as the day is going on, no delivery, nothing. And I'm starting to think, well, you know, this is not happening. They, I have a feeling they might've lost my package. So I called them up and I started bitching and complaining to both FedEx and to Dell. Dell, by the way, to their credit, felt really bad. And they actually took a hundred dollars off my, my price I paid. So I think they did the right thing. But in the end of the day, I needed this to do the video. So I told FedEx, I said, look, you're costing me a lot of money. I'm losing the, every, every minute that goes by, I'm losing views that I could be uh, getting. And this is not good for business. This is terrible. So, so uh, the 17th comes and goes. And by 5 p.m., it no, no longer said it would be delivered by the end of the day. It says delivery pending. I call again. And then I get another uh, story on how they didn't make it onto the truck on the 17th, even though it was supposed to. And I'm at this point just livid. I'm, I'm like, really, and it's, a, it's really taking the wind out of the, my sails. I was so excited. We're going to get the XPS 13 and so forth. And then finally, I thought, if I don't get it yesterday, which was the 17th, I won't see it till Monday. But uh, last night, I noticed that it got updated that it would be delivered today, the 18th. So uh, I said, well, I don't believe it. I really don't. So 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock, nothing. It says it's on, the, but it did update to say it's on the truck for delivery, which was a little bit encouraging. Finally, by like two o'clock, I got it. They delivered it without ringing my bell, but I, I noticed from my camera that I have in my doorbell and my cameras in my house, I was monitoring this and I saw that they just tried to slip it in there like by the door without letting me know. I'd have to sign anything or anything. So <laughs> terrible uh, FedEx if you're watching, terrible job, but at least it got delivered and we got a chance to look at these today. Well, this one today, this one we looked at last year, but really messed up. I appreciate that, Raphael. So uh, Edwin B saying, when your FedEx deliveries are delayed, you can be sure that they are cooking in some truck for days, especially here in Vegas with over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I've had cell phones delivered, which are hot to the touch out of the box. Oh, absolutely. This thing, I'm sure I let it, I had to let it cool down probably for a couple of hours. I didn't open it for a couple of hours. Uh, but yeah, I mean, totally uh, F that up. Uh, the FedEx really fucked it up. I and mean, there's no other way to put it. All right, so I think we're going to call it a live stream. It's almost an hour and a half. This is way too long. Uh, when dealing with these, let me see what um, William has to say. When dealing with these people, remember these things. When things go wrong, that is the norm. When things go right, that is the exception. This is the world we live in today. It should be the other way around. It was just not a good experience and not the first time I've had a problem with FedEx. You know, I've dealt with DHL and they've been a lot better. UA, uh, um, UPS, not much better than FedEx, but not quite as bad, at least lately. But FedEx really has really dropped the ball. They, they've really gone down. Uh, Duck Vision says he has a package that's been on FedEx's truck for delivery for two months. <laughs> Thank you, the manufacturer just shipped me another. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's a mess. They're, FedEx is a mess. Yeah, I, I did a comparison, but we can do it real quick before we go. While we have a hundred of you watching, let me uh, let me show you the cameras on this, and then we can see if it's better on the new one versus the old one. So I already looked at this earlier. This is a full HD, not a full HD, an HD, which is 720p IR camera. This one is also HD. We'll get an idea between the two. So the one on the left is the 9320, and this is the 9310. Oh, much better. So this one is much better. That's more grainy. Um, I could try to, I, I can't show you another angle, but you t here, here it is. You can see that this one is darker. This one has better colors, uh, less grainy. This one's less grainy. Yeah, it's much better. Uh, would I like to see a 1080p on this? Yeah, but this is so much better than last year. They're both IR cameras, but 
you means you can log in with face recognition. But, you know, this is a much better, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. We'll talk more about it in that full review. So that gives you an idea of the cameras between the two. This went on a lot longer than I thought I would. Uh, we have 107 likes. All right, so I got a lot of testing to do. Uh, I wish I could stay on longer, but I have all this testing to do. But I will come out with a video on this probably tomorrow or Monday at the latest if I can get everything done. And uh, the only thing we're missing now between these two um, is the ports are not as good. So this has an SD card reader here. And Edwin, B's can, Edwin B is uh, helping out the channel here with another $10 super chat. If everyone super chats $1, that's $100 right there, or $5, that's $500. Andrew spent five, 2K on this for his use to see. Come on, guys. You know, I appreciate that, Edwin. Um, but, you know, I do it because I love it. And um, this is going to be my personal one. So also, don't keep that in mind. So this is the 9310. This has, and thank you, by the way. This has a SD card reader there. Uh, no SD card on this one. So if we look at these two together, you see we lost uh, the SD card reader. Uh, we have the Thunderbolt 4 port or 3 port there. It's not Thunderbolt 3, it's Thunderbolt. I think it's Thunderbolt 3, right? Um, and then on this side... You can see the difference there. Headphone jack is now gone. So ports, not as good, but the better camera and uh, better performance. And actually, before we go, I want to show you something. So this was the score we got on the Geekbench on this. So 91, 24, 15, 92. Oh, wow, another super chat. And this one's from Pine to Pine 3. Thank you, my friend, for that one pound uh, super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, let me close this. So let me check a look. Let me take a look at the difference in the scores here. So this is what I did last year. Okay. Oh, wow. So you see a difference here. So. Not more, I think more so in the multi core than it is on the single core. So, the multi core, you're going to get about 1600 on this because I did on another test on that. That's what we got. This one did 1509, but look at the difference between the, the XPS 13 Plus, which got a 9124 on the multi core and 4690 on the 9310 on that same test. So, we're looking at about double, pretty much double or almost double on that. So, and, uh, this is looking pretty good in terms of multi-core difference. And that has to do with the obviously 12th gen versus 11th gen, having the 12 cores, the eight efficiency cores, and that's four performance cores versus just having four cores on this one. So a uh, pretty big difference to me uh, when it comes to that. So that's pretty, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, what do you think? Let me know. Uh, but that's where we are. Boy, we have 111. I hate to say goodbye. I'm trying to say goodbye, but people keep giving me giving me live, uh, giving me super chats and stuff. LG Grams are pretty darn good. Yeah, I you know I took a look at one earlier this year, and I'm still loving it. Hopefully, they'll send me another one to take a look at. Let me see. I I'm having so much fun that I hate to say goodbye. Looking good, looking good. All right, and let me just check something else before we go. Any other questions, people? Let me know. Don't, don't have to go. <laughs> I appreciate that. No say bye, but hello. <laughs> hello again, everybody. How about speaker comparisons? Yeah, I'm going to do one in the video. I did one, remember I did about a month ago. That took a lot. That was like pretty interesting. Actually, you know what? Let's do one more thing. Let's do a speaker test between these two. Let's see if this improved. I, and this sounded pretty good when we did it earlier. So let's see real quick. Let me go to Epidemic Sound here.
Let me get it all set up here. All right, let me set this one up. Okay, so we have the two set up here. Let me put this. So on the left is the 9320, and then on the right is the 9310. Thank you for that super chat. J14, Gerhard Barr, I don't want to miss any super chats. Thank you, my friend. All right, let me point the microphones here. Wow, that sounds that sounded pretty good. Let me move it over to here. Yeah, the new one sounds better. Definitely sounds better. Clearer, louder, deeper. I agree. Thank you, Raphael, for that super chat. One dollar. Didn't want to miss that one. I uh, appreciate it. So the sound is better on the new Dell XPS 13 Plus 9310. So the displays look very good. If you look at them, I think they're very similar displays. Uh, this is look maybe a little bit brighter, but again, I have to definitely check that out. I agree, Manny, that is definitely louder and clearer on the 9320 versus the 9310. So, oh, 9120, you say is louder. Okay. Uh, I don't know about that. I thought this one sounded louder, but that's me. Oh, okay. Wrong model. Okay. I don't know. I, here's my take. I think this one sounds better. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Um, yeah, I thought the SLS, the Surface Laptop Studio, had some very good speakers on that. MacBooks have great speakers. Uh, you know, my my uh, I the one I have here on this one, you can see it here. The 2019 MacBook Pro 16 has some of the best sound uh, that I've seen, so that's been pretty good. 113 likes we have 99 of you watching so we got a lot of interest in this but i'm going to do a formal video on this we're going to get everything working on it uh get all the tests out on it i'm going to test the battery life i'll do i'll run the battery test tonight and see where we go from there uh but looking good so i think we're going to wrap it up here people it's been a great live stream there's so much we got to do on this one but uh, I want to thank all the moderators for doing such a good job. Uh, for all those who gave Super Chats today, I really appreciate it. It helps me out. Thank you once again, everybody, for stopping by. Sorry for the technical difficulties we had early on and a little bit during the show. But we're going to iron all that out hopefully soon. Take care, everybody. Good to see William. Good to see everybody here. Obviously, Raphael and everybody else. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to work on the video on this one. Get that out as soon as I can. And I'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.